In this video, I'm going to compare Perplexity AI to SciSpace. So SciSpace is specifically meant for scientific research papers to be able to find them, be able to generate information from them and generate summaries from them as well. Versus Perplexity, on the other hand, is really just a more general chatbot. It's a lot better than ChatGPT because it's actually connected to the internet. It can find sources, all of these things. It doesn't have as much of a hallucination problem as ChatGPT does, but it's not exactly meant for specifically scientific research. So I want to use it for scientific research and compare it against SciSpace. So for this, we're on perplexity. So for this, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my focus to academic so that at least I get a closer comparison. Because if I just start comparing with like Wikipedia and all these other things, it's potentially going to not give me as good of results. And now I'm going to ask it a question. So I'm going to ask it, um, how are steroid isomers analyzed by ion mobility spectrometry? Ion mobility spectrometry is just an analytical technique. Steroids are a class of biomolecules and isomers are two things that have the same mass. Um, so it should, all I'm asking is basically how are these things being analyzed by this? And what I wanted to do is give me a really nice, robust kind of small lit review answer to this. So I'm going to go ahead and let that start. And then I'm going to copy this exact same question. So I'm not um, tricking it or anything like that. And I'm going to paste it into here. So this is at typeset.io. I will leave links to both of these websites down below. I'm just going to search for this question here and press enter. Now, both of these, the way I'm using them are completely free to use. So it's not like a difference of paid versus not. Um, Perplexity does have a paid option. You get a higher level of AI, a little bit better AI, GPT-4. Typeset or SciSpace does not have that paid option available currently. So what I'm primarily going to do is look at this insight from the top five paper, this area up here and compare it to this area right here. So you can see it gave me six papers here. So it's just a little bit, um, one more here. Um, but it also includes the citations in here as well. So we're saying, according to the search results, eye mobility spectrometry can be used to analyze steroids. Okay, yes. Um, one study used targeted derivatization reactants, reactions coupled to IMS to improve the resolution of challenging isomer groups, allowing for more accurate. This should be the Ahonen paper, I'm assuming. Is it? No, it's a new paper. The study employed liquid chromatography ion mobility mass spectrometry to analyze multiple classes of steroid hormone isomers. This should be my paper, I'm assuming. Yeah, liquid chromatography ion mobility. Yep, yeah, that's my paper. So that's correct. Third study, TWIMS was used to separate estradiol isomers in positive mode and tandem mass spec via CID enabled with relative quantitation of each isomer in negative mode. That's also my paper. Um, that's a communication that I wrote. Metal ion induction was also used to separate steroid glucuronide isomers. So this one, let me, yeah, this is coming from the exact same one. So that's true. The separation that occurred in positive ion mode was because of this metal ion induction occurring here. In a fourth study, twins coupled with mass spectrometry was employed to separate. So this is confusing. This is saying three and four. So you can see right here, it's pulled in three and four. Those are this exact same um, paper. So it is literally just re-saying what it set up here in two different sentences. This is all saying the exact same thing. So that is some duplication in there. So I think that's important to know that it did pull like basically duplications. And then finally, another study used TWIMS to separate multimer um, metal adducts of isomers and mixtures and demonstrated the potential for TWIMS for the rapid and biological samples, either with tandem or without chromatographic separation. So this is five, this is this one. And then six is also touching on this one a little bit too. Six was all done in single component. This one was done in a mixture. So that is a pretty decent um, basic review of what's been done in the literature up to this point. I will give it that. It does have this duplication in here. It does include this source here that it doesn't even mention in its answer. So I think that's interesting, even though this is actually a really good source for this topic. 
The one thing I will note is this is the only paper that has come out since um, 2020. So I think this was 2021, 2023. So that is the newest paper. These other papers are older papers. So it's I wouldn't trust this for like the breadth of um, most recent work or stuff like that. But if you're just trying to get a breadth of what's gone on in the field, this is a decent way to be able to do this. And you can ask follow-up questions here. So now I just wanna compare this general answer to SciSpace's answer. So steroid isomers are analyzed using IMS coupled with LC and uh, MSMS. So this has one, two, and three. Um, so it doesn't show me the years here, let's see. So this is my review. This is one of my papers. And then this one, I'm assuming is a newer paper. Yeah, 2022. It tells you that IMS is a gas phase separator that has shown potential for separating steroid isomers. So it does actually talk to you about what IMS is. Um, perplexities did not. When coupled with LC, it enhances the resolution, providing more confident identification. So this one is four, and we can scroll down here to see. So this one's here. This one's 2020 again, and then five is 2019. So yeah, this is actually, I would say combining a little bit better different references that give overall the same um, general answer. Like these are both LCIMS can be used in enhancing steroid isomers. Those are two different references that do it combined together. It's more like how you would actually write a lit review as like a more experienced researcher instead of going one by one by one. Um, LCIMS analysis has been used to examine steroids and steroid glucuronides in human urim and serum samples. This has resulted in enhanced signal to noise. That's correct. IMS can also be used. So what you see is it did really good at providing the citations up here, and then it stopped halfway down. And I'm not sure why, but that is one thing to note. Whereas perplexity did give us citations all the way through, even though two of these citations were redundant. IMS can be used as standalone technique by utilizing derivatization of steroids and formation of multimers. I'm wondering if they're pulling this from that review specifically, or if they're pulling this from those specific actual research papers instead. And then the use of IMS in, in um, conjunction with LC can increase the overall resolution of steroid isomers and allow for more rapid analysis than LCMS alone. Additionally, IMS provides ion neutral collusion cross sections. Oh, so this is a part that wasn't even included in perplexity which can contribute to the identification of analytes. Okay, so overall, I would say a lot of this, I think got pulled from that um, steroid analysis by eye mobility review. It sounds very similar to the way that I wrote it in there and combining the different things together. So that's coming from the review. These other ones are specifically coming from actual research articles. Honestly, I think both of these did a decent job in the breadth of what, how are steroids being analyzed? They both cover, um, at least by ion mobility. So this one also uncovered tandem mass spec, but that wasn't actually using ion mobility. So over here we have formation of multimers, derivatization, LC combined with IMS. Um, the only thing I'm not seeing in here is the metal adduction component. That is where a lot of the research has been done. So I'm a little surprised that SciSpace isn't picking that up. Um, that would be a big point to miss if you, were, if you were writing a review, whereas Perplexity really picked that up. It also picked up derivatization, um, and it, I think it picked up the multimers. Let's see. Yeah, it picked up the multimers. So it did pick up a little bit more broadly there. Um, SciSpace is, I think, is doing a little bit better of, of combining information together instead of being as repetitive as per perplexity. But ultimately, I would say these are almost complementary answers, right? Um, just relying on perplexity or just relying on SciSpace may allow you to miss things. Now, obviously, you need to go actually read these articles, right? Like you can get a general understanding using this, but you need to, I think it's a little bit more helpful to go read the actual articles. I will say SciSpaces is written a lot more like how I would write a research article, where Perplexities is written a lot more how people naturally talk or like how a blog would be written. So those are some differences, which is understandable because Perplexity isn't really meant for scientific research. SciSpace is meant for scientific research. 
Now, there is a lot more going on with SciSpace, right? Like you get these tables here, you have the ability to do a lot more with this data coming from it. You can get specific information on each individual paper that's not being given to you by perplexity. But when you're just trying to get a high level overview, I don't think it's a bad idea to use both. Use perplexity, use SciSpace, and figure out which is really working best um, for you, giving you the most comprehensive coverage. And even are there places where they are um, disagreeing with each other or they are discrepant between each other. Those are idea or places that you might want to think about as where the AI could be messing up, where it could be creating things that aren't really there. So I like using multiple different AI sources to be able to generate these overviews and then always, always, always check this information against the articles themselves. Don't use an AI and say, well, the AI told me it said it, so I put it into a paper. Definitely don't want to do that. If you are working on learning your field, download my 30 day research jumpstart guide. That's going to help you to know how to learn your field, what papers you should read and how to develop ideas and test them based on the papers that you read. If you want more videos on science space and perplexity, I will leave a few up here and I hope to see you in the next video.